It's at a school and I walk up to a playground full of kids naked, not okay. That's not going to be allowed. Well, this but is somebody, the playground. See the toys? But somebody the approaching the front of your house and there's a child, because there's a child outside when they do that, and they leave when they're told they haven't committed a crime. Um, I don't know. If, if it's... If it's the laws that we have here, or if it's you guys not having a willingness to do something it's about it. It's the laws that we as have here. As far as I'm concerned, you guys are completely f pigs. This is ridiculous. Welcome to Audit Oblivion, where we highlight wildest police interactions. You have the right to like, comment, and subscribe. Anything you do can and will help us create more amazing content. You have the right to share this video with your friends. If you do not have any friends, consider joining our community where you can find like-minded individuals. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. On June 4th, 2024, Bend Police responded to a report of a naked woman approaching a home where a child was present outside. When officers arrived, they spoke to the homeowner, who was understandably concerned for his child's safety, and was visibly upset. The officer explained the nuances of Oregon law, stating that public nudity is not illegal unless intended for sexual gratification. This is outlined in Oregon Revised Statutes 163.465. Hello. No, okay, I'm Officer Avery with NPD, just so you know, my camera's on. She lives next door. You guys have been here a lot of times for them before. Okay, uh, what's her name? Her name? That's what they told me, I don't know. Yeah, her name's Okay. So, what what happened? We were sitting over here, three of us, my wife and my two-year-old boy, and she came walking through the yard over by my truck, took a left from up here completely naked, besides a, a shirt which was like draping like this, unbuttoned. Yeah. And we threw a vagina out and everything right in front of my little kid, and I quickly covered his eyes. Never seen she knocked on my front door too, and it's like, open the, whoa, headlights are on. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I heard. And she, does she live in? No, yeah. up in the yeah. building. Up oh, over here. okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna well, wait for my partner to get here. Yeah, so, idea. just so you guys are aware, in Oregon, you can walk around completely naked. There's no law against it, as Any long as you're not kids? doing it. Yes. There's your partner. As long as you're not doing it for your like sexual gratification or the gratification of somebody else. Oregon law makes a clear distinction between mere public nudity and nudity with intent for sexual gratification. This legal nuance is crucial, but can be frustrating for residents seeking immediate action. Let's hear the officer's explanation. Like, okay. you can literally throw, like, we've had people throw running shoes on and, like, dudes just go jogging naked and there's no, um, you know, if she's making, like, an effort to, like, look at me type thing. And uh, I think that's what she did. She walked straight up to us. I'm sitting with my little kid. She right. She says, look at my body, my bare naked vagina right in front of you. That's what she said? No, but that's what she's doing by presenting herself to us. No, I, I get it. And, like, I, I don't agree with it that it's okay. I'm just telling you, in Oregon, it's not a crime to do that. Like, you can just walk around in the nude as long as you're not... It's not so, for a sexual manner. For your information, now, she has a history. It wasn't but she a couple... Had a of, less than a month ago that you guys were here. And okay. Away, so. I, I need to get a record of you saying that, because when I tell my wife, she's not going to believe that. So you're saying I can that, show you the ORS, but for you're, sure. You're saying in the state of Oregon... Mm -hmm. Someone can walk up in to, to your two-year-old kid completely bare naked, and that's not a crime, even if it's on your property. Correct. Well, so it's trespassing, but what I'm saying is there's no laws against the, the actual nudity portion of it. So, so you can expose yourself to children in Oregon. Again, if, if you're not doing it for sexual gratification or the gratification of somebody else, yes, you are allowed to walk around in public naked. It's just it's hard we're, to believe because we're we're on private property. This is where I live, and someone just came and exposed themselves to my two-year-old boy. And right, this and officer saying that it's not a crime. So any of you out there that are viewing this, please check and make sure that Oregon State Revised Statute says that you can expose Thank yourself you to little kids. kids. This is unbelievable. Well, I don't even know why I bother calling you guys. Because I'm going to do what I can to help you is what I'm trying to explain. I'm explaining God, that no the actual no trespassing. And the actual it's nudity. Happen again in the next time, but apparently I can so go can... take my clothes off and go walk up to little kids to show them my body, and that's not a problem. In this. this statute has been in place since 1971, with amendments over the years to address evolving societal norms and legal interpretations. The subjective nature of what constitutes intent for sexual gratification can lead to varying interpretations 
and enforcement challenges. State. If you're doing it specifically to go show a child your naked body, yes, then it, there's a there's the intent behind what you're doing. And but her, her walking up to us, where I'm sitting right here with my little kid, that doesn't constitute that. Because of where you're talking about, and I'm telling you how like how how law works on this. Like that's a common area where people would approach a residence. It's not in your backyard or in a private area. That's a public act. Your mailman, somebody who's coming to your door, anybody who's visiting would walk up this way. So her walking up and approaching you, if you say, hey, I don't want you here and leave, and she turns around and leaves, she's not broken any law because she's approaching on a public right of way, basically like how you would approach anybody's front door, okay? Okay, earlier- She left when he, she he knocked told, on my door. But what I'm saying is we can still trespass her, and if she ever comes up here again to your door, then yeah, she's gonna go to jail for trespassing. Do it. Right? But she could be naked on the sidewalk. right there in that tree. And that, that's fine. That's what I'm saying is though, that, that is something that I could enforce. I was just trying to explain to you the nudity portion of it. It's, it's hard it's like, for me to believe, man, that's insane. Yeah. So, I mean- Believe me, like we get calls for this type of stuff, like I said, a guy running down down Reed, or, uh, north into 3rd Street, butt naked with running shoes. But it's approach, not a crime. Approach. The debate centers around whether the law adequately protects public decency without infringing on personal freedoms. In State versus Van Humison, the defendant was convicted of public indecency under ORS 163.465. He appealed, arguing that the charge should be dismissed under ORS 135.703 after a civil compromise with a complainant. The Oregon Court of Appeals held that public indecency is a crime against the public at large, not just the individual who witnessed the act. Therefore, it is not subject to civil compromise. In the Bend incident, although the naked woman approached private property, the presence of the homeowner and his family during the exposure supports the interpretation that the act affected public morality. Approaching children though? Again, there would have to be the intent. Like if it's like, I jump the fence at a school and I walk up to a playground full of kids naked. Not okay. That's not going to be allowed. Well, this but is somebody, the playground. See the toys? But somebody the approaching toys. the front of your house and there's a child because there's a child outside when they do that and they leave when they're told they haven't committed a crime. Um, I don't know if, if it's if it's the laws that we have here or if it's you guys not having a willingness to do something it's about it. It's the laws that we as have here. As far as I'm concerned, you guys are completely this is ridiculous. Okay. You can go ahead and trespass, but that's insane. Imagine if I had a little girl out here and someone was touching, you know, bringing their penis over in front of my little kid. Are you just saying that that's fine? I'm trying to explain Blame the laws, to you. Then. Blame the laws, but I'm saying that that's as far as I'm so concerned. You that's understand my when I'm in uniform, I don't get an opinion about what I do. I get to enforce the law. I don't get to say whether no, I personally you, believe it's right or wrong. No, and I don't think you're that's understanding what you're doing, that. Though, because you're interpreting her walking up to us. Yeah, no, I'm going doing. off what no. you told me. No, that's your interpretation. Okay. Yeah, so her walking up and approaching my little kid, that's her <laughs> trying to expose herself to my little kid, but you're deciding, you, officer... Would you like Avery, me to have her deciding. trespass from this property? You can, you can go ahead yeah. and do that, but then tomorrow she can walk right there and do the exact same thing with an impunity. You're, you're correct, because there are no so laws against being nude in it's Oregon. Totally it's worthless. nothing to do with a personal opinion. It's everything to do with the application of the law and what I'm allowed that, to do in this state. I find that hard to believe that if it was a man over here with his penis out, you guys would have him in cuffs right now. Nope. Well, if I find that hard to believe. And I won't test it because I don't want to be a sex offender. But I would be a sex offender for the rest of my life if I did that. Do you understand what I'm talking about the intent, though? Do you know what right? happened when I called 911? The lady on 911, the operator, laughed at me when I said there was a naked woman. She laughed at me. Right. That's the response I get from you useless this is just the most ridiculous thing in. I've ever dealt with. Well, I, I think if we time. can get to the resolution of this, uh, Res I can understand your upset. There's no resolution, though. Well, well, I can, I can, tomorrow. I completely well, understand being upset. Yeah, like, yeah. like, I'm not telling I have kids. I would be upset also, okay? But what I'm telling you is there's only certain things that I can do to hold her accountable. Trespassing is one of them. Being nude and walking up to a front door of a residence. Like here in your backyard and she walks in, property, yeah. different. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like the law she differentiates. That's how you meant to saw a walkway. So it wasn't less than a month ago. She was out here naked throwing stuff off the porch and throwing stuff out the window. So there's a record of, of sure. her and she was I, I, I have something. It's gonna yeah, happen again yeah. then. So there's nothing nothing you, you guys you can do. Search and it's, find you're gonna For the nudity it. portion of it, there's really not. So what like, has to happen is I have to move then. So <laughs> so like I said, sense. trespassing, she can get arrested for trespassing. If she comes up here, she can be trespassed and she'll be arrested for that. Right? Yeah. Stand on, the, on the curb then. Right there. If you're, if you're on the curb, there's nothing you can do about that. That's what I'm telling you. Unless she's acting in a manner 
that is like corresponds with sexual gratification for her or she's trying to arouse someone else she's that is specifically what the law says it seemed like she was trying to arouse us when she came over here earlier knocking on your door yeah, she uh, yeah she was standing do you know what her name is you don't know her last name i forget so yeah but, okay. her, not friends. and she's up, upstairs in the house yeah, right there this one right okay here, we'll right go have here. a chat with us so, sure. yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. so i don't know what happened okay. to that so she, right yeah, she may be a pre-trial or something, so. Where did she, where was she? She so walked up the she sidewalk. Was, she, right here, she walked up to my child. I'll, I'll fill you in. Okay. Yeah, so, no, we're going to go have a chat with her. Alright, cool. We'll go talk with her. The officer's explanation and response align with ORS 163.465's focus on intent for sexual gratification. The officer's professionalism and adherence to the legal distinction between general nudity and sexual intent reflect the law's requirements and its broader public morality focus. Officers head over to the residence of the woman in an attempt to establish contact and assert trespassing allegations. The woman was informed that if she returned to the property, she would be arrested for trespassing. I just want to FYI, I gotta let you know I'm recording. Okay. I'll hear about something that happened. It doesn't sound like much. Do you mind chatting with me real quick? No, I don't want to have any chat with you guys. Okay. Why is that? Because I just don't feel like it. Just okay. I'm going to explain something to you. Okay. Walking around naked and approaching people's front doors when they have children outside is not going to be tolerated. Okay. okay. You're going to be trespassed from all of this property, all three of these units. If you go back, you will be arrested. Do you understand? I think she understood. Do you know her last name? Do we know this alley? The woman is told that she will be arrested for trespassing if she goes back to the property. At this stage, officers have a brief conversation about the incident whilst they were waiting for control to confirm the address. What she was doing. Exactly. She just walked up and was like, they were like, what are you doing? She was like, oh. and she just left. And it's... Well, he's like, you can see everything. And I'm like, I understand that. Like, I would be upset too, but it's not. Yeah, this is simple. How you doing, man? Uh, you live here? Yeah. So, are you. Yeah. So, apparently, Joel was naked and she came out and walked around and went up on the front porch and there was little kids out there and stuff. And I'm trying to explain to her that she can't, like, that's I told not her a good idea. I, I told her to go to bed because she's been up all night. She's right. She's not in any trouble for it. Okay, yeah, I was trying to explain that she's going to be trespassed. If she goes back over here, she's going to be arrested. They're all very upset. Okay. Understood. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. And just FYI, we're recording. So, yeah. are you... so what's your last name? Roommate? I just need to write it down. We're roommates now. She's my ex-wife, though. As okay. of, like, years. Okay. What's Rachel's what's last, last name? name? Or what's the address here? Oh. Okay. Yeah. What's her last name? Good. What's her date of birth? Good. So the reason why I'm asking you this mm -hmm. is they've asked for her to be trespassed. Is it here? Yes. What's her last name? Okay. Eleven eight ninety. So before we continue, are there any weapons in the apartment? No. That she could access right now? Nope. Okay. Nothing like that. No, I'll call in the weapons. Okay. So she's being trespassed from this property right here. If they okay. go on in front of the house where she was in the Copy. That's going to be the female we're out with. Belongs to that property right there. Yeah. We will arrest her. And we'll These, take her to yeah, this whole building, okay. all three units. And since she's standing right there nodding her head, I believe she understood that. So um, I would do your best to make sure she doesn't do that again. Um, her being naked, not a big deal. Right, Depend, uh, based off what they told us, it sounds like it wasn't a crime to us. It's okay to be naked. How she was acting though, not appropriate. Yeah. Okay. And with the Push it a little bit further, it could be a crime. So if there's children yeah. walking around, so yeah. be considerate of your neighbors and their children. Do you mind if I got your information, sir? I really don't want to give it right now. I we, we have all of okay. it. 
Yeah, I mean, you guys have me. We've been here before. Somewhere. We have it on file. I just, I mean, I just Not a problem, take sir. care of this. All right, like, have a good day. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be that, but That's I all right, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. I appreciate yep. it. After officers obtain the necessary information regarding the woman from her ex-husband, who is currently her roommate, they return to the complainant's residence to finalize the trespass notice. The officer attempts to clarify the situation to the distressed father. However, a disconnect between them is evident. The father perceives the officer's interpretation of the law as inadequate and subsequently articulates his experiences with law enforcement, expressing his profound lack of trust in the police force. Um, I so say, man, we've, we've notified her. I, I already know all about the trespass. I understand how it works, but like, the way things are going, and I see you guys took the blue stripe off your car, the politics and everything in this state. I'm sure you're a great guy, you're a great officer, but the way that this shit is heading, you're being so handicapped, you're being so held back that like, you either got to go somewhere else or find a new profession because it's like, I feel like I need to just move away from this terrible, terrible state. It's just, it's shit just seems to just get worse and worse. People stealing stuff out of my truck. I call you guys, they come out and they just shrug. What are you going to do, you know? It's There's nothing you can do. It's challenging for us because you have like, getting stuff stolen out of a car in the middle of the night. Like, it happens all over the city. What it and is, like, it's, it's the homeless. Yeah. And the fact is, you can corral them, you can put them somewhere, you can tell them you can stay there, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, they're all in the same boat, they're all doing the same thing. I caught them stealing my stuff five different times. Mental I health and <laughs> legalizing drugs are the two biggest problems we have, because with the drug use and it being legal, they steal everything to go get their next fix. I know about And we it. deal with it constantly. Sorry to hear that. It's just insane. I don't want my kid to end up with the same shit. No? Well, the fact that you care will probably help keep that from happening, right? I talk to a lot of parents that are like, but I feel like you actually care about your kid. What can right? I do, you know? Subject, yeah. subject to the same thing tomorrow, potentially. But um, it's what it is, I guess. It sounds... Uh, is if we keep documenting it and she becomes a nuisance to do it. Um, but she'll screw up. She comes up here. You've got cameras. Like, you record her up on here. We told her, because all three of you, so she has no reason to be on this sidewalk right here, right? If it's all three of you guys, that's perfect, because that means it keeps you protected all the way out to the sidewalk. This is all part of your property, right? So if she cuts through here, anything, call us. She'll go to jail. Okay? Like, I'm, I'm serious. We will, like, I am happy to do whatever I can to help out for somebody who's causing issues for you like that. I just can't, I can't bend the law for my opinion. Because, like, we've I've had calls like this before, you know, the, the neighbors out gardening, butt naked in their front yard. And they're like, my kids can see from my house. I guess we'll chalk it up to a difference of opinion because the neighbor out gardening is different than someone approaching your child. That's different. Right. That's what happened. But it's not the intent to specifically, like, if your kid's out here playing and she walks up, talk to your kid naked, it's a little bit, that's a little bit different, right? Even then, it would still be hard to prove that there was a sexual intent in it, right? She's acting in a lewd manner, props herself up on the table and is, like, exposing herself to a kid. 100% she's going to go to jail for that. That's a sex crime, right? So it comes down to a slight variation in it's the it's the the action. Simply being nude and walking around or walking up to knock on somebody's door is in a, in and of itself is not a crime, right? If you're in your backyard and she comes through your back fence into an area where you have a reasonable expectation of privacy, and she's nude, you would be looking more like a private indecency, right? That would be against the law, just because of that's what I'm trying to say is the nudity and where she was doesn't make it a crime. I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't like... Talking about it more is not going to change anything. Okay. There's nothing... I just, I'm just do. hoping to, to give you some understanding of, of like where we're at and why we can't just arrest her for it. Um, but the the trespassing part, we can. That's something that we... That's an easily, like, she walks on your property, it's a automatic misdemeanor, street to jail. Yeah, a okay. lot of people in my generation really don't like the police, but I've always been supportive of them. It's been hard, a few different points in time. When I was in high school, <clears throat> I was approached by somebody who was trying to stab me with a knife when I was at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I got in my car and I locked the windows and he was outside the doors with the knife. 
I called the police. The guy had taken off. I had his license plate, description, everything. The cops came. It was the cop, the SRO from my from my high school. Refused to do anything about it because the cop said that he wanted to search my car before he would further investigate my claims of crime, well, something like that. And to my disbelief, knowing my rights, I said no. And after that, that seems he like laughed at me, shrugged it off. No, it's because it's because of uh, it's complicated. But I've never had a good experience with city cops before. I'm a CHL holder. I spent lots of time talking, volunteering, doing things with the uh, sheriff's department. Never with the city cops. You guys get a bad name because they're always doing speed traps, giving people speeding tickets and stuff like that. Well, that's it funny because like depending on the, the citizens you talk to, that's their number one complaint. Like when we ask the citizens what they want to see more of, they want traffic and speed enforcement because like, people drive crazy in this city. It upsets some people because they don't want to be caught and charged for speeding. Doesn't I'll tell you, me personally, I give a lot of warnings because I'm like, hey, if it's a $100 fine for smoking heroin on the street, I'm not going to rip you for 265 for going 10 over on the parkway. If you keep doing it, we'll have an educational conversation. There's a warning in the system. You get stopped again. It's like, I've never I can't cared keep too warning, much about that one because driving isn't right. It's a privilege. That's correct. And personally, I've never had a problem with speeding. I've never even been pulled over. Okay. So I don't, I don't care so much. But people equate, you know, why aren't you out solving real crimes? You know, you're smoking. But people are dying on the parkway every day in the winter. Mm -hmm. They're dying once a week in the summer, at least. If I never go to another one again and have to pull a dead body out of a car, it'd make me real happy. But I've done that more times than I can count. So that's part of the reason I do speed enforcement too, is because I'm, I hate going to those and then having to go tell somebody's family that mom or dad's not coming home because somebody was speeding and clipped them and, and that's it. You it's know hard, what I mean? Sorry for being emotional. It's all right. It's, it's hard, you know. Understand. I completely understand the emotion. I just like, I'm trying to explain to people what I can do. Here's what I can do to help. Here's what the law allows me to do. Cause I don't want to set an unreasonable expectation where I'm like, she's going to jail. And then she doesn't. And then you're like, the cop lied to me. He said she was going to jail, you know, and that was a crime. I, I just try and set the expectation. So it's like, I'm going to do everything I can to help you. I want you to understand what the law allows me to do in this situation. Just gonna have to be careful having my kid play out here all day like normal because there's a crazy person next door, and it seems like nothing's going to change. The best thing, get a video, because then if I watch the video and I'm like, that looks like she's doing something outside of just walking up to a house. You know what I mean? Turns around and like, oh, I dropped something. You know what I mean? Like anything like that. Then then well, it goes what, to what happens with crazy though? It's like you know you wait you wait you wait until with, you, the with cable crazy snaps, people? and then and then what? That is like the biggest conversation. Like I used to live in Eugene and worked in there. They had a, a side service called Cahoots. That would come. Familiar, yeah. yeah. Harm reduction. Yeah. Uh, which they were great because I had a neighbor. I was in an apartment. My neighbor next to me liked to garden at 3 a.m. naked and knock on our door. And like we'd have people over and she'd try and come in our house. Cahoots would come pick her up <laughs> once a week and take her in. We don't have anything like that. The state of Oregon, our mental health program is... It's, it's in pretty bad shape. So, and it shouldn't be a function of law enforcement. Like, it's not a law, a the law to be, you know, mentally, mentally ill, but it falls to us because there's nobody else that can do anything with it. A few times because I've seen her arrested a few times. Yeah. Uh, she, she may commit crime. Oh, okay. Go um, ahead. Yeah, man. Uh, sorry. Let us know. If she comes back, please call. As the officers were preparing to depart, the woman's ex-husband returned to provide additional context. He mentioned her recent mental health struggles, exacerbated by the recent death of a family dog that had been with them for over a decade. These mitigating circumstances could have contributed to her erratic behavior and lapse in judgment. I should go to the stabilization center with you? Not with me. No, we don't have a car. She wrecked our car. We should guys. be willing to go to the stabilization center with one of us. I don't think so. I think she just wants to be left alone is what she's saying. That's right what now. it seemed like to me. She's just sitting so, on the bed now and she's just yelling at me like Okay. So I can also call and request CCRT, which is our mobile crisis unit. Okay. And there are clinicians that will come out and talk to her. And they can try and help her and get her to stabilization center if that's a good place for her, or they'll ask us to transport. Her. Is that them? 
Yeah, but that's to shoot Sky to Mental Health. You can also just call non emergency and ask for uh, the mobile crisis CCRT. Yeah. Okay. That you'd like I'll give you this just in case. It okay. has some extra numbers for mental health and other services, but yeah, she's going through something right now. She is. Definitely. And our dog just died yesterday, so she hasn't slept since then. We've yeah. had him for 10 years, Sorry, so that, man. in her head, like yep. everything's coming down on her right now. So. Yeah. Get a hold. I would do it right now if you can. Okay. Get a hold of. You can call non emergency, like he said, ask for a CCRT. Okay. I explained to him a little bit what's going on with her. Um, call, hopefully, call yeah. Okay. Hopefully, they'll call and chat, and she'll chat. Hopefully, she'll chat. Okay. Um, I'm sure and, she's not willing really to talk to anyone. Yeah. Well, they'll even, if he's safe, they'll come out to the house and sit and talk with her here yeah. in person. Okay. okay. And they'll be able to help her a lot better than they can. Okay. I'll let her know. I All right, man. You Best of luck to you. Thank you for watching Audit Oblivion. If you or someone you know needs mental health support, please reach out to local resources for assistance. Like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Together, we can foster a more compassionate and informed community. Until next time, take care and remember, you matter.